Hello there, ladies and gents, you chemistry students of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Um, Tyler and I here, we're gonna talk about the hydroboration of alkenes today. And to understand this reaction, um, let's first talk a little bit about our reagent, um, which is a borohydride. Now, borohydride's a little bit different than most in that it has a partially positive charge on the boron and a partially negative charge on hydrogen, which you don't see very often. But this is just a periodic trend. The hydrogens are more electronegative than the boron, so they're gonna have more of the, of the electrons more of the time, uh, most of the time. So that's why you end up with a reagent like this. So here's our alkene. We just have a simple alkene attached to a benzene ring. And to understand this reaction a little bit better, we're gonna just draw out the mechanism here. So here's our alkene and we have the borohydride that's gonna attack it. So here we have the pi bond and the alkene attacking the boron at the same time the hydrogen is gonna attack the carbon. And this is gonna um, set up a transition state um, that's a little bit interesting. Uh, a little bit strange, but also helps us account for the way that this reaction works. So you're going to have some partial bonds set up, and those are indicated by the dotted lines here. Those partial bonds are going to be between the boron, the hydrogen, and both carbons. Um, so the reason that this adds anti-Markovnikov is because whenever the pi bond attacks boron, um, it has to decide which carbon to leave with a partial positive, a brief partial positive charge. And since the secondary carbon is going to be more stable as a partial positive charge, um, the boron is actually going to add to the primary carbon, or the delta negative hydrogen is going to attack the partially positive carbon, and in this case, and in most cases, that is the secondary carbon. So that's why it adds um, anti-Markovnikov, you end up with a BH2 group on the primary carbon um, instead of the secondary carbon. And then from there, you can go on ahead and um, add hydrogen peroxide and NaOH um, to replace that BH2 with an OH group. All right, switching out for Grayson now. So one of the most important things to remember in this reaction is the stereochemistry. So we're going to go back and look at the reaction itself real quick. So as we can see, the boron or the BH2 is on the mo or the least substituent carbon and the hydrogen has gone to the most substituent carbon. So in that, the stereochemistry is always going to be syn between the OH and the hydrogen. And we're just going to use deuterium to help distinguish the stereochemistry. So these will be the only outcomes that you can see possible or possible for this reaction because they always have to be sin of each other. So